up one morning and I needed to catch an airplane and uh, I had at that point a, a 300 megabyte SCSI drive um, that was a good solid drive and I went downstairs and it had, had an error uh, uh, and I remember thinking I've got to get to the airport I can't fool with this right now and I, I I leaned over and I flipped the switch and that was the end. My daily ritual was to go by, make sure the machine was, was happy and see what the caller count was today. And, you know, as the numbers just kept creeping off and off and off and off, I said, you know, at, at what point is this an anachronism? You know, it's, it's there as, as a, you know, a living chunk of history, but it's not really serving a purpose. One day, something, something flaked out. I don't know if a memory chip went or but the machine fell over, and I just kind of went, it's time. And I think we were having dinner at Outback one night, and I kind of, you know, I was thinking, you know, I don't feel like running the board anymore. And my friends were like, well, it's, it's up to you, man. It wasn't like a planned shutdown when I shut it down. It was, I had a disc crash, and of course you never had the backups that you should have. And When it finally got down to about five calls a day, going from, you know, 40 plus calls a day per node, down to five for everything, it just didn't seem worth it anymore. When you came in in the family room and, you know, still sitting there with a little snoring phone going on, it's like, okay. Uh, lack of traffic. First he dropped one phone line, then he dropped the other. This used to be there was always somebody on it, so that definitely took a lot of the uh, will to do anything with it out of it. He said, oh, we don't have enough traffic to constitute two phone lines anymore, and then we don't have enough traffic to constitute one. Mm -hmm. And that, that, was, that was like a sad day in my book. Once you've discovered the internet, and even when BBSs were still going strong, you knew that it was the future. In fact, it became readily apparent that the only function that a BBS would have at that time would be so that you could access the larger internet. One day I walked in and the guy was using Netscape 1 or something. I was like, hey, what's that? He's like, oh, I'm just using Netscape to get on the web. It's like, what? And he said, don't tell him you've never gotten on the internet. I was like, no, no, what's it all about? I think the last time I went on a BBS, it was actually a rant going, you guys have to get on the internet. He's like, oh my God. And he called everybody over. We have an internet virgin here. <laughs> Once I got into the net, my BBSs were history. You know, it, hindsight kind of morphs things, but it seems like over a period of about a month, you just saw everybody just walking off and going to the internet. At that point I said, you know, there's really no purpose to BBSs anymore and the BBSs just died instantly. We didn't know anything about the internet. Some of our customers had been saying, you know, you should really start looking into this. You guys are modem guys, you know. Um, this, is, this thing's going to happen whether you like it or not and you're in a good position. Yeah, but I didn't think that it was going to go away so fast. I wasn't, I didn't really think it would, but I wasn't surprised. I was surprised. I mean, it died within, what, six months? I'd say that we went from bringing in thousands of dollars for selling packages that we brought in almost nothing. I remember having a chart of, of the sales of Searchlight BBS, and right after the 1995 BBS convention, that's when it all went to hell. We just weren't selling bulletin boards anymore. Nobody wanted them anymore. I think that's when everybody kind of woke up and said, you know, Bulletin boards uh, aren't anything anymore, now there's the internet.
to a certain degree, anyone who's involved in the BBS world comes across these magic pundits who went, who run, ran around in 1998 saying, the web is changing everything, and went, no shit. The bulletin board system was, in its at its maximum, I think it was 280 lines. And yeah, we, what we were doing is we would put up 10 modems as a test for the internet access, and they were immediately full. And so we figured, well, our test has been complete, our customers want this stuff. We put 10 more up. They were immediately full. And so we just kept adding 10 lines and 10 lines. We knew that this internet thing was really not just a flash in the pan. The, the classic comment, and I didn't even recognize it at the time, there was a big thing. Somebody gave a presentation every Thursday. We would just have a little lunch presentation. Somebody would talk about some topic, and somebody was talking about the internet. And a big argument broke out in the hallway outside, and the owner of the company was, was arguing with my friend Colin, and the owner went, this, this internet thing, it's just a fad. Two years from now, it'll be gone. And, of course, I didn't recognize it at the time, but Colin sort of walked up to me after, he goes, no, I think it's the other way around. Out of the ashes of those bulletin boards emerged about 5 thousand internet service providers. And it happened like this. You know, we like to think that the internet service providers sort of sprung forward fully grown and they were MSN and they were Prodigy and they were all of that, but um, didn't happen that way. Any of the BBS operators that I knew um, added internet capability as it became possible. They added uh, the listservs and internet email. Then they added gateways that allowed you to go to the World Wide Web. More and more of our customers were paying for the bulletin board system and a subscription to the internet. And then, you know, we started noticing people just buying the internet and, you know, what do I need this bulletin board system for anymore? And so most BBSs transitioned so that they were a BBS with the internet and then they were BBS internet and then they were an internet service with a BBS attached and some BBS's survive to this day on that basis they're web-based or they're independent dial-up online services and it simply evolved that way all the internet service providers that we wrote for in the end were the same guys in most cases, using much of the same equipment in the same rooms. Our friends here in Dulles, Virginia, America Online, most people don't realize, started as, uh, as a seven-line BBS right here in, in the Reston area. America Online grew to take the dominant position now in the Internet, but has never really given up its online service BBS kind of look and sense. I coined the term Internet Service Provider. We made a lot of the words that you use up in my office. So I never did see the break. Uh, and in fact, I still have to reject the entire line of, of argument that there ever was one. It, it was uh, uh, names of things changed and they evolved as they went along. I, I don't understand uh, a strong motivation to run a bulletin board system that isn't networked. Because if it's not networked somehow, then no one can get to it, in which case it's not a very interesting system. If you believe people should be able to get to it, I don't understand why uh, it, there isn't a perfectly reasonable uh, coexistence where it's plugged into the internet to get to that community. And it could also be dial-up. I mean, there's no reason why you have to see this as uh, somehow distinguishing. Uh, the L Luddites who used to lay down in front of the machinery in the, in the Middle Ages to try and stop the mechanization of industry, uh, they never w were capable of uh, appreciating what was going to happen in the future. I realized that, that the internet has, has clearly made bulletin boards an evolutionary dead end. Um, and I think that's exactly the same with, with those uh, uh, people uh, that felt that uh, BPSs were going to have any 
a future at all in, 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 a day, in, in an internet age. They're like memory typewriters, you know, it's like it was sort of a good idea and it sort of worked, but, you know, the concept of computers and word processors has completely subsumed any true value to a memory typewriter you could find. It's, there's, it seems nostalgic, like something was lost, and I don't want to sound cheesy and like, our innocence was lost or anything silly like that, but it seems like a, a certain sense of community or like of camaraderie or something was lost. You don't have a community anymore because the person may be, you know, across the country. You're never going to meet them, you're not going to know them. Whereas with BBSs, basically, Somebody could announce on a BBS one day, hey, let's meet over at Joe's Pizza on Saturday. Everybody know where Joe's Pizza was, and they all go over there and meet. One of the things that always attracted me the most to bulletin board systems in general was the sense of community fostered by a smaller, more uh, uh, close-knit group of people who always came to the same place. And so you kind of got to know these people. You know, there's just so many people out there, and it's just so vast, and it's so far-reaching. Uh, you can bring up things like the World Wide Web or probably more appropriately Usenet as analogs to the bulletin board system, but when you have a, a Usenet news script that has 25,000 messages in it posted by 5,000 people and another 30,000 people just reading, you very quickly lose that sense of close community. It's not like, hey, you know, why don't you come on over? Well, I live in Japan. That would be why I can't just come on over. On a forum, you have a sense that you're like this tiny little ant they could get swept away at any time and it'll still be there right. and stuff. The web seems like it's a layer of separation between you and what you're doing. Th this is really a serious problem I find on the internet. It's that people have the attitude that if you can do it, then it's okay to do it. I think that the percentage of idiots is the same now as it was back then, but if you have 20,000 people instead of 50 people on a board, you're just going to have that many more idiots. When you reduce everything down to numbers and, you know, funky letters on the screen, you, you're not you're not getting letting people get involved with it. And, you know, most of the stuff on the internet, they don't care if you're involved or not. So it's, it feels more like one-sided, like somebody put this together to serve to you. So you look at it more passively, maybe. A website today... It's just, it's not, I don't know, it's not a solid of a connection. I didn't like the fact that the internet was available to everybody. Like, I just, I wanted it to be like, just, a, not a select few, but it wasn't just about being the smart kid anymore. It's just everybody could be the smart kid. I was the only person who really understood this aspect of life, and now it's become so pervasive that I find that Actually, I'd almost rather discuss anything else. Once upon a time, we used to say that a million monkeys on a million typewriters would eventually produce all the works of William Shakespeare. Now, however, thanks to the internet, we know this is not true. Some people check it out and they bail because the pace is not fast enough for them. And other people hang around and they'll call in maybe once a month, maybe once six months maybe once a year. I could have shut the BBS down four years ago. I didn't, because I couldn't see it. I mean, even down to 50 users, I couldn't. They'll ask a question. There'll be people that'll uh, ask a question about things that they can't find out on the net. How do I do? How do I do this? And I don't want 19 million spam messages coming back at me because my email address got harvested. The kids, well, they're about old enough now. They're going to we're going to use that as their training ground before we turn them loose on the net, internet. Their training ground is going to be working through the BBS. Hang tough. Just hang tough. And, and see see what comes out. The, the other thing is curiosity. What is it going to be next? Can we make can we make what we are now survive the next whatever the next big thing is? Can we integrate what it is we have now 
into whatever that becomes. Um, you definitely maybe, no, not maybe. I know from talking to you guys more than once, you wonder, why am mm -hmm. I doing this? Yeah. Um, is it impacting my relationship uh, with my significant other? Um, is it impacting my work? Is it impacting um, other aspects of my life? My BBS has been kind of running since 87. And for people get into nostalgia, whatever you want to call it, want to come back and visit it, and they know they can still find it there at relatively the same number or a number they can access. You know, realistically, I'm not doing this for my callers because I don't have that many more. I'm really doing this for myself because I enjoy the technical challenge and I enjoy seeing it work. And I also realize that I'm going to get excited about it for a short period of time, and then I'm going to cool off on it. Uh, we're lucky. We're still, you know, I think the only reason that we are still running BBS is because we like to get together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is group therapy. I'll, I'll we wait. have we have almost nothing in common aside from the fact that we run these these BBSs that hardly anybody ever calls anymore. I have people that that maybe called my BBS five years ago that drop in, fill out a new user form, and just call a couple of times, see what's going on. They get their nostalgia fix, they go away, they come back another year or two later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness there's not a 12 step program yeah, for BBS. Right, right. Every now and then. So, hunting around on eBay, I was searching for anything with Commodore in the title, and I found something called the Commodore VIC 1011A. It gives your uh, Commodore computer a real COM port on the back, like a PC would have. So, you can very trivially do a null modem connection between the Commodore and your PC. Now on top of that, I've been uh, really getting into TCP IP stacks and communications technologies at my day job. And just an idea I've been toying around with. Uh, wasn't much more than an experiment. You know, does this work? Yeah, it works. Well, that's kind of fun. You know, the software only took me two evenings to write. Yeah, I tried calling it. It works. And that's kind of neat. I tried calling it from my desk at work. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, I can call my Commodore. And you know, from my uh, Windows workstation at work. In jest, I said if I get 20 people calling it, you know, I expect 10 or so, then I'll leave it up for a couple of months. And as of last, uh, actually, I just checked it about 10 minutes ago, and I've had 1,150 callers. There's certainly a lot of nostalgia that uh, the, call the callers are uh, experiencing. Uh, I've got dozens and dozens of uh, sysop feedback uh, messages that people have left. They'll call the board once and uh, they'll log out and in the, you know how when many BPSs you log out it says you know send feedback to sysop and it, everyone pretty much 100% say yes and say this is neat you've brought back some uh, really good memories of my uh, you know youth back in the 80s you know thank you and then they disappear and I never hear from them again. The day I shut my BBS down, I put my, the whole thing on those two tapes. And uh, a few years later, like this year actually, I went to go and restore my tapes and found out that they're bad and I can't get my data back off them, so my whole BBS is gone. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I, I had... I was able to sleep at night because I knew if I ever wanted my board back, I figured in five or ten years I'd restore it and maybe even put it back up and run it again. I figured that I was set and then, yeah, when the time came and I decided that I wanted to restore my BBS to, to look at some of my old dancing screens and all that and old mail and stuff like that and it was gone, I, I was so devastated, like, I couldn't believe it. As the, the whole bunch of us have gotten older, we've grown up, but we haven't outgrown the BBS. Um, Dial-up is dead. That paradigm has gone away. People do not drop their internet connection and dial into a BBS anymore. That whole single user online thing, yes, it's dead. The BBS lives on. I don't think we're actually anywhere near the end of the uh, uh, bulletin boards. We are in long past the end of the dial-up bulletin boards. 
yes, it's a dead thing. No, it isn't. It's only dead if you dismiss it as such. The BBSs that tried to stay exactly the way they were, they've become extinct. But the ones that observed the changes that were happening, the way people access computers and information services online, that got onto the internet, that moved with the, with the tide, with the currents, and, and actually adopted all of the new technology, they've moved forward, they're still going strong. This is where you go when you want to find the real content, when you want to find the real people. The BBS is not dead by any means.